Hey everyone, I'm Michael, and this is another episode in my series, A Plant a Week. In this series, I talk about various houseplants. I highlight one for the whole video, talking about how to properly care for it, how to water it, how to propagate it, everything that you need to know to keep your plant healthy and happy. This plant is Neon Pothos and is a cultivar of the Pothos plant that is found throughout French Polynesia. It's just one of a variety of Pothos plants that are out there, but ironically seems to be one of the more elusive ones, at least if you're looking for it at stores or nurseries in my area. It stands out from the regular Pothos by its bright neon green coloration. This little pot I have here of it was created from a very long plant my mom had that was super old. It was made up of two vines that had to be somewhere like 30 feet long or, or more than that. It was ridiculous. She gave me permission to cut it up and turn it into like over a hundred little plants. I think I ended up with three very dense plants from the cuttings. She has one, I have another, and I'm not sure who I ended up giving the third to, but probably one of my sisters. As a pothos, this is one of the easiest plants you can keep. They're super hardy and very difficult to kill. I like to think of pothos as a gateway plant for new collectors. It's a plant you can keep alive relatively easily, and it just opens up the gates to adding more and more plants to your collection. Because pothos are a tropical plant, they want to be potted in a lighter soil. My soil is full of perlite to give it a chunkier, airier feel, allowing the water to drain through it. However, pothos aren't very fussy when it comes to their soil. Before I cut up my mom's neon pothos, it had spent years in old hydrophobic soil that had zero to no nutrients left, and it continued to put out new growth every month. Pothos are a great choice for rooms that aren't super bright. While this plant does enjoy indirect bright light, it can go in darker corners and still produce new leaves and growth. The brighter the indirect light, the faster it'll grow and the larger the leaves will grow. Another tip for growing gigantic pothos leaves is to allow it to grow up rather than down. In the wild, pothos grow up the sides of trees and other plants because it's an epiphyte, climbing up with its aerial roots that attach to other plants or walls. As it grows taller, the leaves on top become larger to catch more light. One way to achieve this in your home is to use a moss pole and train the pothos to grow up the pole. As far as watering, most pothos can stand being over and underwatered. And the neon is no exception. I water mine about once a week and I give it a long, thorough watering. I do always check the soil before watering though. If it's still saturated from the last watering, I hold off. These plants will also tell you when they're a little thirsty by becoming droopy and sad looking. But don't let your plant go too long without water because I've noticed they can die quickly if you don't water them fast enough. As far as fertilizing, pothos are one of those plants that could be fertilized almost through the whole year. They have a very short dormancy period. For me in Canada, those are usually the months of August and January to February. Otherwise, they'll appreciate some fertilizer to help with their prolific growth. You can use store-bought chemical fertilizer, organic fertilizer, making sure to dilute the fertilizer that you do get with water, or you can do what I've been doing and make your own fertilizer with used coffee grounds, tea scraps, and eggshells. I've also been watering my plants with the water from my fish tanks, which is full of nitrates and organic fertilizer from the fish waste. And most of the plants have been doing pretty well with that. I've only had one plant that's been a little fussy and hasn't enjoyed that. Propagating pothos is super easy, and just like the regular golden pothos, neon are a very quick species to root. I tend to root my pothos in water simply because it's the easiest and fastest method for me, but you can propagate them in sphagnum moss or perlite as well. To propagate, find an aerial node and cut just below it. Place that cutting into water or whatever your preferred medium is and wait for it to sprout roots. With neon pothos, you won't have to wait that long, possibly a couple of weeks. Then you can plant up the cutting or add it to the mother pothos to create a bushier plant like I've done with this one. All pothos are toxic, causing vomiting, excess saliva, and a lack of appetite. Just make sure to keep these plants away from your animals or children. Keep houseplants out of your mouth. <laughs> as far as pests, I haven't really dealt with any pests on any of my pothos, except maybe the odd fungus gnat infestation, um, but I haven't had one of those in a while. In the summer, I keep ladybugs in the apartment, which really helps keep the gnats down, and in winter, it's so dry up here that they don't get a chance to breed. My pothos collection has definitely grown in the last few years. 
Golden and Pearls and Jade, Cebu Blue, and Joy, there are so many varieties of Pothos and they remain popular among plant collectors. So if you come across one of these at your local nursery, pick it up. Between its fast growing nature and how easily it is to propagate them, you'll have a bushy neon plant in no time. Thanks again for watching! Remember to like and subscribe for similar content. On Mondays, I post videos about houseplants. And on Fridays, I also post videos about houseplants. And reading, writing, photography, art, and any other generic interests of mine. As always, you can find my social media links in the description below. Also, you can find links to H&H &H Games, the board game company I've helped create, and our debut board game, Season of Heroes. You can also find the Amazon links to my fantasy series, A Chronicle of Crowns. Thanks for watching. Bye!